Let's hear our reading for today. Uh, A wonderful journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And Elsa and Tony are to read it to us. The reading is from Luke 24, verses 13 to 27. Now that, the same day, now that the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, they were talking to each, with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priest and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all, all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb this morning, early this morning, but did not find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Tony and Elsa. We're going to use a prayer on the screen. And again, I invite you to share in the words in bold print. A prayer that reflects on that journey with Jesus. You take us seriously, Lord Jesus. You listen to our questions. You walk alongside us. You share our journeys. You surprise us and bless us. You fill us with wonder. You call us together. You call us to life. Life abundant, overflowing, with love and kindness. Amen. I very much wanted two people to read that passage of that story of the two disciples walking home. So thank you, Tony and Elsa, for sharing that. That picture of the two disciples as they walk home, heavy laden with all that has happened in Jerusalem. It's a wonderful picture of Jesus then drawing alongside them. And they don't recognize him as Jesus risen alive. Their heads and minds are too full of all that they have seen of his death, that terrible death on a cross. But he walks alongside them. And it is only later that they recognize that that was and is Jesus. It's one of the great pictures, not just of a past mysterious event, but of the present, of how Jesus does walk alongside us in our own journey of life. And we may not recognize, we may not ever recognize that he is beside us, but he is there. 
In recent months, one of the best ways to share time with another person outside your bubble has been to meet outside and perhaps go for a walk together. And socially distanced, you can talk as you walk alongside. You can share that companionship of just being together, walking the same way. The death of Prince Philip on Friday marked the end of a long and remarkable life, a remarkable journey that has interwoven with the life and history of our nation. And one of his greatest legacies, of course, was the continuing Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme, which aims to equip and empower young people from all backgrounds and communities to build the skills, confidence and resilience they need to make the most out of life. If that was the aim a couple of years ago, it is all the more important in this pandemic time and in the months and years ahead. Some seven million young people have benefited from that scheme. And some of you may have taken part as a young person or perhaps your children or grandchildren or perhaps you've helped others to take part in that amazing scheme. Or you've been out in the countryside and seen this sort of group of rather bedraggled young people with their heavy packs and their maps wondering where the next point in their journey is. Perhaps we've all been touched in some way by that amazing scheme. There's something about walking, walking together, that is almost symbolic of what life is about, sharing the journey. There's a great prayer that came about when the churches worked together in a new way. We are strangers no longer, but pilgrims on the way. Pilgrims together on the way. Cleopas and his companion were walking home after the terrible and confusing events that had just taken place in Jerusalem. They wanted to get home. They'd seen the one in whom they put all their hope destroyed on a cross in the most brutal of manners. They'd heard the strange rumours that the tomb was empty, that the women had seen a vision and that he was alive, but they had not seen him. And as they walked, of course, they talked. They talked together. Why the Gospel writer only gives us one name is a mystery. Why Cleopas and his companion? Who was that companion? Perhaps a man or a woman, a brother or sister or wife? We're not told. It's clear that they're very close because they sort of think alike. They speak for each other as they share the story later. It strikes me that perhaps that blank name is there so that you, the reader, the listener, can fill in that blank. You can put whatever name you want as the companion of Cleopas. Perhaps the name of a friend or loved one, or perhaps your own name. And you can share that journey. And you can share that wonder of Jesus drawing close, even though he remains hidden. If you were walking with a friend today and Jesus came alongside, what would you say? Would you tell him the story? Maybe he would ask, well, what's been going on? 
this last year and you would tell him all that you've experienced. Those sad and confused disciples don't keep silent as they walk. They talk. They offload all their sadness and their questions, their hopes, their confusion. And Jesus helps them to do this. What's been going on? It's a very simple question, but it's one that needs to be asked. We need to tease out, well, what's been going on for you this last year? We need to open up those conversations in the weeks and months ahead. I hope we do that, helping each other to somehow come to terms with what's been happening to us this last year. One of the great legacies of the Duke of Edinburgh was to get people to talk to each other. He was known as a great convener, a networker, someone who brought together people, people of different backgrounds and faith, people of science and people of religion. He brought them together. And we need to do that. So often at the moment, people are separated into different camps and they remain almost behind great walls, talking only to each other within their camp. And they, we need to break those barriers and talk openly with each other. The disciples talk to Jesus and they listen. A conversation carries on. And then they're challenged. They're challenged to look again at scriptures, at the Bible. Later they were to say, were not our hearts on fire within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? The Bible, this heavy book that often we see as hard going, is made alive and relevant to them. He opens the scriptures. One of the experiences of the Bible made alive that's special to me was sharing in a time at St. George's House, Windsor, when a group of different church ministers from different backgrounds and denominations came together. It was a conference that had been founded uh, by the Duke of Edinburgh and the Dean of Windsor back in 1966. And every year since then, well, apart from last year of course, people, ministers gathered and explored the issues of faith today. We wrestled with the Bible, with its context and its complications, and found Jesus speaking to us, fresh and dynamic in our own situation. So let's walk together and know that Jesus walks beside us. Let's talk more openly and listen more carefully and lovingly to each other and to those voices that sometimes we have ignored. And let's allow Scripture to live, to hear Jesus opening it to us, that our hearts may burn within us, be warmed and softened and refreshed. Thanks be to God for his living word. Amen.